Welcome to the Episcopal Church of our Savior on this glorious Sunday. Whether you are joining us in person in our sanctuary or joining us virtually, you are welcome and Christ is ever present with us. Before our service begins, I'd like to make a few announcements. Next Sunday, October um, the, the 3rd, on the eve of the Feast of St. Francis, we will have our annual blessing of the animals. This will be a service that is open to the public, so all of you are welcome to come with your beloved pets for the blessing. It will be held outside at two o'clock in the afternoon, and we will also be accepting donations of food for the animal shelters in Madison County. If it's raining tomorrow afternoon, then we will have the blessing of animals on Monday, October the 4th at seven o'clock. Also, in um, preparation for the visit of our bishop, this coming Saturday, October the 2nd, we will have the Love Your Church Day where we can all gather and get things organized in um, the outside of our property and the inside of our buildings. If you can come, please speak with Leslie. She will be able to tell you um, the different things that we would like to get done. And we'll be providing coffee and snacks and bottled water, and we'll have some really wonderful fellowship time. If it is raining next Saturday, then we will have um, our Love Your Church Day the following Saturday, which is October 9th. Our bishop will be visiting with us on October 10th, and we look forward to welcoming him. There is a sign-up sheet in the Narthex who anybody would like to come to bring refreshments for our fellowship time. Our opening hymn is hymn number 704, O Thou Who Camest From Above. Almighty God, 
To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now sing the Gloria in the hymnal service music 204. chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly measure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the Old Testament is from Numbers chapter 11. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry there them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a suckling child, to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, for I have found for if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord says, said to Moses, 
Gather me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place here with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not, not gone out to the tent, so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of the chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his Spirit on them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm today is Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. It's found on page 607 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say it responsively by whole verse. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and the joys of heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives life to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than any gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, and than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often the offense cleanse me from my secret faults? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The appointed epistle for today is from James, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are they cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being just like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whomever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great milestone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worms never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Are any among you suffering? This is the opening question asked by James in today's epistle. I don't think there's anyone among us or in our nation who can't relate to that question. People across our nation are suffering in one way or another with emotional, physical, mental, or spiritual pain. And our daily news is filled with heartbreaking stories and images of people suffering. I think it's realistic to say that in life we can't avoid suffering. We've all experienced some sort of suffering at some point in our lives. However, with some life experience, and as Christians, we also can come to understand that we're never alone in our suffering. God is always present and accompanies us in our suffering. We're assured of God's presence in the wonderful words of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We can also be comforted, pardon me, we can also provide a comforting presence for anyone who is suffering. And this is what James recommended that his people do. He said, are any among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. This is what we do when we bring flowers from the altar to our homebound members, when we visit our members when they are in hospital or in nursing homes, and we pray for healing and have anointing of oil at the monthly service of healing. This is why we list people to pray for each week in our Sunday Bulletin, and why our dedicated Daughters of the King pray daily for people in our congregation, in our community, and in our world. Many people feel uncomfortable about visiting someone who is sick or suffering. But when people are sick or suffering, Often, they simply want empathy. 
They want to know that they're not alone. And when we visit them, we often don't need to say anything. We just need to listen patiently with a compassionate heart and open mind and to be present. By our presence, we assure them that we're not alone. We represent the presence of Jesus. And by that presence, we can bring comfort and reassurance to them. And we're all in need of comforting and reassurance. We need the comforting of our Lord Jesus. We want reassurance that things will get better. There's a powerful image of Jesus in an ancient 8th century Coptic wooden icon that is now in the Louvre Museum in Paris. It originated from a monastery of Bawat in central Egypt and is considered to be one of the oldest icons that we have. And it has a fascinating picture. It illustrates Jesus standing next to Abbot Mina, who was the superior of that monastery. And Jesus stands side by side with Abbot Mena, and his arm is around the abbot's shoulder. Jesus seems to be providing warm friendship and protection to the abbot in his community. I think this image can be seen as an invitation to be a friend of Jesus, but also to trust that Jesus is there to protect us. In our increasingly secular society, far too many people are disconnected from Jesus, and far too many children are being raised without any connection to a church or other faith community. And in the last 18 months, we've had to be socially distanced from friends and family members to protect ourselves and others from the COVID virus. And this has been stressful and isolating for many people, especially for the elderly and for people who live alone. And it's times such as these that we need more than ever to pray together to connect with one another, and to remain connected with Jesus. You see, God has wired us for connection. It's that connection that's the foundation of our healing. Emotional and relational and sometimes physical healing happens when we are known, cared for, and loved by others. That's the power of true community. I think this is why it's so comforting for us to come to church each Sunday or to come for our Wednesday evening services. It renews our connection with people we know and love, and it renews our connection with Jesus. I think this is also why in the early stages of the COVID lockdown, when we couldn't meet safely in person, it was so important that we were able to watch our worship services on our church's Facebook page or YouTube channel and to have a virtual coffee hour each Sunday. There was some wonderful fellowship at that time when we were meeting virtually. We were connecting. And we were able to experience the presence of Christ among us. It's important that we all continue to work together to remain connected with members of our church who are unable to be here in person. And we can do this by visiting them, calling people, sending cards to let them know that they are loved and cared for and not alone. James was also concerned about strengthening the connection and trust among those early Christians he was writing to. And he was emphasizing the healing and transformative power of prayer. Now, Episcopalians may not be able to quote chapter and verse from the Bible, but we sure do know how to pray. 
were connected with other Episcopalians and Anglican, Anglicans around the world through the Common Book of Prayer, or the Book of Common Prayer. We are connected in our prayers of the people each Sunday. And it's through these prayers that we share in common that we're connected with one another and with Jesus. James also recognized that even in our praise and singing, we are praying. He said, are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. St. Augustine famously said, those who sing pray twice. We are blessed by the extraordinary musical gifts of our musical director, Jane, and our choir members. We experience joy each Sunday as we sing songs of praise. This is another way in which we pray. And the psalmist reminds us that our help is in the name of the Lord. When we pray for help, we often ask Jesus for help. When we pray and ask for help for other people who are suffering, we pray in the name of Jesus. And the more we pray, the more we can experience the divine presence of God in our lives. The more we pray, the more we can trust God and let go of trying to fix and control things ourselves. We learn to hand over the reign of our lives to God, praying as Jesus prayed on the Mount of Olives when he said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. There's a lot of wisdom in the well-known serenity prayer that was written by the American theologian, Reinhold Niebuhr. And it's commonly quoted as, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. This prayer is widely used in Alcoholic Anonymous and other 12-step programs. Niebuhr composed this prayer in 1932-1933. That was a time when there was tremendous suffering in the world. It was in between the First and Second World War. It was during the Great Depression. And he was wise in helping us understand that there is value in accepting that there are many things that we cannot change or problems that we can't fix. And it's in those sorts of situations in which we must stand back, let go, and pray to God, saying, not my will, but yours be done. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, Guide us in deepening our relationship with your beloved Son, Jesus, and with one another. Nurture within us a life of daily prayer. Let us be instruments of your love and healing as we reach out to comfort those who are suffering and alone. May all we do be for the glory of your name. Amen. I invite you now to turn to page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer as we say together our statement of faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he 
of the people are found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. And there be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, and, and those who deliver from their distress. Give to all the departed eternal rest, and for all those who have died of COVID. Let the light of shine on we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray for our member Paul Berger. Let us pray for those impacted by Hurricane Ida and flooding. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Raphael's Church, Lexington, for Reverend Canon Dr. Helen Van Coubren, Rector. In Richmond, we pray for St. Thomas Lutheran Church, for Reverend Mary Metzger and their members. God, to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty 
Almighty God, have mercy on me. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. anniversaries to be celebrated this week? Okay, I'd like to invite Hank to come and join us. Hey. Today is the last Sunday that um, Hank will be blessing us with his presence. Um, he will soon be moving up to Pennsylvania to be with his daughter. And so, Hank, we want to thank you for everything that you have done as a beloved member of our parish, the many different ways in which you've contributed to and, and supported our ministry. And we just pray that God will go with you, that God will bless you, um, bless your family, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope you will keep in touch and that our paths will cross again. And as an expression of our appreciation, we have uh, this small gift that oh, we you. want to give you. And as you have been such a faithful member of our choir, our choir has a special tribute that they would now like to sing for you. Since, since uh, 1972, I've been in the bluegrass. And I've lost a lot of my New Jersey accent. <laughs> but the one thing I have adopted, and I was hearing myself saying that as I was going uh, through various prayers and what we were doing, is I no longer say like. I say lie <laughs> and various other things like that. So uh, I really feel is that you have uh, been a part of my life, and when I leave here, um, I'm going to take a part of you with me. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for being such a blessing to us.
let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 488, Be Thou My Vision. continues on page 361. We are using Eucharistic Prayer A, right to. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Who lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. 
And when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and the Maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ is Lord of celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
me now to page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. Our closing hymn is hymn number 376, Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Wonderful week.